you would think that it would feel like riding a bicycle or something, like you'd get used to it. But every single time I sit down in front of this thing, I feel like the Virgin Mary. Maybe I'll just get back just a tad. Like it's my first time. I don't even know if it was her first time, but I, I bet she was nervous. I had to park my car. Following the success of my first dating video. Is this okay? I'm still in my work clothes. I think this organization was extremely intrigued by how quickly I was able to engage a female audience. You guys are the specialists when it comes to knowing what where the film can take and what it can't. <clears throat> my first arranged date via this service was not what I thought it was going to be. And by saying that, I mean it was not a real person. I got punked. It turns out it was a prank of some kind. Uh, did I feel taken advantage of? Yes, I did. I do feel that way. I thought it was real because Ellen, or who I thought was Ellen, who ended up being a 23-year-old gentleman by the name of Jacob Hazelquist, in her email seemed so eloquent, which sounds a lot like the name Ellen. He saw my ad and seemed to think that it was funny. This woman has got a lot of charm. She's got a lot of pizzazz. And that it would be funny to play a heartless, soul-crushing, tear-jerking, bastardous, dastardly prank of some kind. She seems like someone that I would not mind uh, having intercourse with. Let's grab a little bit more of this. And I had purchased uh, a couple of... Can I say condom? I'm trying to stay PC. Can I say that? I purchased a couple of topical protective devices for my manhood, just in case, because I thought things had clicked so much through the written exchange that we had had. When the heart breaks, it, it doesn't break even. It was a minimal exchange because she had sent just one message to me and I took that as though it was a home run. I heard that, I don't know if that was a, a Socrates or if that was a Beyonce song, I can't remember what it was, but it was uh, something substantial. And I was gonna see her here, we were gonna have, um... a magical night, and we did not end up having that. These are good guys. These are good guys. I think that you guys did a top-notch job on the video quality. I got a sound guy, I've got a video guy portraying me in an accurate light. These are really good guys. Those two things will go a long way with me. They have decided to start a regular video blog about Phil Dawson and his pursuits. Uh, throughout life, throughout love, happiness, <clears throat> the whole kit in caboodle. I'm really excited about the opportunity. I feel like this will be good for both of us. I think this will be a nice change of pace for me, to be honest with you. I don't get out a whole lot. I end up staying here quite, quite often. Fortunately, Marie Callender's has got some exceptional choices in the frozen foods. Uh, aisle. You can pop one of those suckers in the, the microwave for three and a half minutes and you've got yourself a restaurant quality meal. You know, and with the cost of gas, getting around, I mean, I have a pretty fuel efficient vehicle, but it's certainly worth counting your coins before you decide uh, against a Marie Callender's uh, microwavable dinner. I don't know what kind of attention this is going to provoke. I hope it's not a ton because I'm here every day. I really am your every day. I work hard, I think harder, and I love hardest. But everybody thinks, ever since I became a CPA, that uh, all of a sudden I'm on some kind of a high horse. And I'm not, at all. Not one part of me is in on any kind of a high horse. I wouldn't be on a sober horse.
I was wearing Old Spice before the commercials came out. That's how old-fashioned I am. I've been wearing it from the start. Just a quick drink to take the edge off. Uh, coming straight from work like this, it's it's tough to, to shift gears. <sighs> kind of went all out. I got a, a six-pack of 16-ounce uh, Tall Boys Bush Light. Got a stitch room. The purpose of this particular post is to talk about something that I went through recently. Yeah, so I had a little incident with the law. The carpool lane is segmented by a dual white line. It's predominant, and it's got the little humps on it. So if you lay a tire on one of those strips while you're going the speed limit, it will make a... It, it will warn you that you have stepped across the line. I was commuting to my Taibo class. I do a three to four hour Taibo class at the beginning of every month. That's about all I need for the entire month. <coughs> a lot of people think that Taibo was like a 1997 to 2003 thing. I do the wrists, I do the ankles, shirtless, a nice set of jogging shorts. I always wear a headband oil everywhere because those sessions get hot and if you ever end up rubbing up against somebody and you're not slick it'll rip your skin right off i had hopped into the far left lane i like to leave myself a little cushion to one side or the other and i happen to be closer to the left lane at that point so i decided to pursue that option and here i am <laughs> I'm getting jacked about my Taibo class, <laughs> and I'm in full warm-ups at this point. This is a lot tougher than I thought it was going to be, really sorry. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, there's a, a double white. Two bold white lines to the right of me, designating my lane from the other two lanes. And I realized, this is an HOV lane. What am I doing? What right do I have? There was not a way for me to merge legally from that lane into the normal commuting lane for a single passenger vehicle, which I was in. I was, I was driving, navigating. I was navigating a single commuter vehicle. That lane is designated for two or more people. I found my way over to what would be considered to be the left lane, but what I had done to change lanes was unlawful. It was against the law. I thought that, I thought instantly I should be reprimanded for my actions. <sighs> no, I'm good. No, I'm good. I'm good. Fortunately, there was a state patrolman's station located just uh, uh, exit away from the incident. I exited right, and I found the patrolman's office, and I had turned myself in. They told me, it's okay. Don't worry about it. You killed your wife. It's all right. She seemed kind of rude, not cordial at all. That's all right. You take one example of human social law infidelity and you've got a world of problems <sighs> I could not take it I couldn't take it not for a second I said to myself make yourself learn a lesson because if you don't learn it this time around you're never gonna learn it now I know you <laughs> I know you you're the guy that never learns a lesson. And that's the reason why you're in this place, this predicament. I convinced the police officers to allow me to imprison myself within a prison cell there on site. And they said, okay, yeah, go ahead. And they had quite a laugh. You know, these are public servants, best health care around. And they're laughing at me for upholding the law? Their job? Bullshit.
while I was in the cell by myself for well over a half an hour, I said a little prayer for a non-religious person. It was pretty tough. Dear Lord, although the crime that I have committed is less than misdemeanor on a human level, it is beyond felonious on a soul level. Although I regret what I have done, I will understand if you strike down upon me your veiny fist of vengeance. I will not learn a lesson unless you beat me with it. They allowed me to stay in the cell for a little over a half an hour, and boy did I learn my lesson. I don't know how they do it. These prisoners, one of the police officer's wives, had made up this plate of Rice Krispie treats. While I thought they were laughing at me, they could tell I was hungry after about 15 minutes in, and they had slid this plate of Rice Krispie treats through the opening of the cell door. Now the cell door was wide open for legal reasons. I looked down at that plate of Rice Krispie treats and I thought, that's why they have a hard time doing it. That's why they have a hard time putting me in this cell. These guys have hearts. They understand when someone didn't mean to do something wrong, unlawful, hideous. That's when I decided to start volunteering at the police station. They have not accepted um, my announcement slash my application.